Hey everybody, it's me, Mark of Manlock Things, and today we're gonna take a look at the new Lomo Instant Square. Well, the Lomo Instant Square, um, a new camera on the market, the biggest competitor to the uh, Polaroid Originals One Step Two. And in my opinion, it is a competitor, a pretty strong one. Um, we will dive into the camera in a second, uh, but first I have to say something. Lomo, if you're watching that, I'm really, really, really sorry. I kind of lost the remote of the camera on the sh outdoors and I can't find it anymore. I'm so sorry. I hope you forgive me. Sorry, again. <laughs> first things first with the camera. It comes with a remote <laughs> that's missing <laughs> because I lost it. I don't know how. It actually the ca the remote sticks pretty good, well in the camera, but I guess since my backpack is so packed with stuff, and when I pulled out the camera, it kind of got hooked on the backpack and fell out or something like that. But stuff happens. I'm sorry. So we won't take a look at the remote control, but uh, every other part on the camera. So first off, if you already pledged for one of these on Kickstarter, because this was actually a Kickstarter project from Lomo, uh, which was successfully funded, should be arriving soon at your door, and the official release is on the 17th of January, as far as I know. Um, this one is an early one, so whew, I was lucky. Be sure to order your batteries. I didn't read everything too good in Kickstarter, which happens quite often. And this camera needs two CR2 batteries, which are hidden in the compartment down here. So these are CR2 batteries, and they actually need two of these little buddies. Um, these little buddies are not too expensive on Amazon, so I will put some links in the description below. They are affiliate links, so if you want to support the channel, buy them over these links. But I didn't have them at home, so I went to a local store and bought these batteries, which made me pay 19 euros for two batteries, which is expensive. If you buy them on Amazon, you get two for seven euros. So be wise and order now your batteries already to have them at home. So the camera is pretty amazing in my opinion. It folds together like a S670. So you open it by just pulling the lens up and closing it together by pushing that level down and closing it down again. To load the film, we open the camera in the back here. You just pull down this little lid. So the old film is in here and it's lying flat in the camera. You just have to pull it out, we put the old cartridge out and put it away. So let's put in some film, Instax Mini Square, we'll put it up. Um, to put the film in, it's pretty easy. You take the cartridge like this, take your camera, lid down of the camera, package like this, marry them together, just put the cartridge straight inside, don't tilt it or anything, then it wouldn't fit in. Just put it like this inside, then it's in the camera. We close the lid, double check if the lid is closed really good, it should be tight, and then we open up the camera and just press the shutter once. And the dark slide comes out and you're ready to shoot. So it shows us 10 exposures and we're ready to shoot. Yeah well, that's the easy part of the camera. So let's open up the camera. Don't worry, you have to pull a little bit strong here on the lens. So we just grab it here with our fingers and open it up like this till it's open and locked in place. When it's locked in place, you see the lens up here and on the other side here, you see the focusing distances. And also here is written the aperture and the focal distance of the lens. What I found a little bit hard or troublesome with the camera was not seeing that I'm not in focus in the viewfinder. So the problem for me is all my cameras actually show focus in the viewfinder or rangefinder. Uh, I, I was shooting with the camera and I kind of took a few pictures that were out of focus because I didn't really think about that, that it's not in focus. So that's one thing you have to keep in mind. Um, always check your focusing. The focusing starts at 0 0.8 meters, which is here. Then it goes to 1 meter to 2.5 meters and then to infinity. These are the settings, but actually that is a, a, a level that you can just move smoothly. So you can imagine where is the position of which focusing distance. So always keep in mind, double check your focusing distance. On the left side of the camera, we have our viewfinder. The viewfinder is pretty small. It has a little darkening on the top left side, like on the top side and on the left side, which actually shows you when you're on 0 0.8 meters of distance, of focusing distance, the f cropping is different than if you're on infinity, because the lens changes 
the selection of the image. A little gray layer that's laying on top of the image. So if I take a look, you can see that little layer. When you look through that viewfinder, make sure that you're looking straight. It's easy to get off, yeah, off axis with a, a double check if the camera is actually pointing where you really want to shoot. So that's one thing to keep in mind with the camera. There's a little mirror reflective one, that's for <laughs> selfie mode. Yeah, I, I, I know I can take selfies. You, you've seen that a lot of times now. Selfie mode shows you yourself in the mirror. What's that Lomo logo below? Yeah, well, actually that Lomo logo below is the shutter. And that's actually my biggest concern about that camera. That shutter drives me crazy. I will do a little series about called unintentional pictures, like this here, or this here, and this here. <sighs> that shutter distance when you push it is really shallow. And if you're wearing gloves because it's winter outside and you just grab your camera and hold it and load new film or anything or open it, yeah, what happens is you take a picture. Selfie mode, Woo we have one. It also doesn't feel like a real shutter to me. So it's like this half a millimeter of push and you take a picture. I would really love something that, that you have to push, that you, you, know, you know you take this picture. On this side here, there's actually two hooks for yeah, camera belts that you have if you have one. So these hooks are easy to mount and you can get a camera belt. So these LEDs show you how many frames there is left in the, in the camera. So at the moment you got 10 left. What features does this camera have? So on the back, the top thing you can see is the flash. So I'm a little bit of a usability geek. And in the back you can see there's written flash, and then there's the flash, strike through, which means flash off. But the LED right next to it is glowing. So what does it mean for me? It means the flash is off, but actually it means the flash is turned on. So this icon is actually wrong. So it's closed now, nothing is glowing. And I open it up and the LEDs start glowing immediately. So as soon as you open up the camera, the flash is immediately charging. That's also one thing I would like actually have to be the other way around because most of the pictures I take are without flash. But I think it's kind of a safety net that you don't take pictures without flash and underexpose them or something like that. So flash is always turned on and you have to turn it off manually just by pushing the little button and it's turned off. Unintentional picture number 527. You will also take a few unintentional pictures. You won't be that clumsy as I am, but you will. Believe me, I, I, I guarantee it. I guarantee it so much. Let's continue with our video. So below the flash there is MX, which means multi-exposure. That's one really cool feature about the camera. The camera can do multi-exposure. Not only double exposure, it can do multi-exposure. That means as long as this LED is turned on, you can take picture, 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 picture and it will combine it to a multi-exposure. So every exposure will be just exposed to the image. And as soon as you press the button again, the image will be ejected. So let's do that just now. So we're gonna take one picture of, of myself. Yes, selfie. Let's take the selfie. Selfie mode, okay, I'm kind of in that mirror. You can see it, yeah. And let's take one. Okay, as you can see, the picture doesn't, didn't come out. So now I'm gonna turn off the flash and take one image of our little wall back there and we kind of do it like this. Let's use my shoulder as a tripod. Longer exposure, but still should be fine. Okay, now we have two exposures on the image and we want to check and we want to check it. Just press the button on the back and you will see. Multi-exposure comes out. Wow. We got our picture. So I put this picture aside so we can take a look at it later. Below that, we got EV. EV is the light compensation, and it actually goes, I think, one stop below and one stop above. There's minus and plus, so if you press once, it's on plus, overexposed, and if you press once again, it's underexposed. Below EV, we have mode. Mode is A and B, and that means automatic or bulb. So you can shoot bulb with this camera. You can go outside and do long time exposures with this camera. It works really good. Nice little feature. Below the mode feature, we got the timer, 10 seconds. Um, that's a really cool timer. So if you just want to put the camera somewhere up there, get all get all your friends together, take a picture, great mode. Also, if you have the remote, that's even better because you can just take a picture with the remote. Also, a little reminder: if you have that remote, 
you also need a battery for the remote, so you need three batteries in total. So I think that's it to the basics of the camera. It's really easy. The camera is not too complicated and it makes fun to shoot with it, I have to admit. Uh, I'm not the biggest fan of Instax, as you know, because I don't like the colors so much. And it was fun shooting and I didn't think too much about the price of the images this time, but also it's just one euro per image, so it's a little bit easier to shoot with it than with a Polaroid film. Uh, our double exposure already is here, if you can take a look, it's a little overexposed since, yeah, that was really close. So, so the camera actually takes Instax uh, square images. Instax square comes in this little pack, compared to an Instax mini, so that's an Instax mini shot, that's Instax square, let's lay them over each other. You can see, it's got a little bit more room. So compared to an original Polaroid, size looks a little bit different, that's compared to an original Polaroid, actually the whole frame fits into that Polaroid frame. Size-wise it's smaller than the Polaroid, which is also a concern for me, but I have to admit the film quality is really good. Um, as you can see on these architectural shots I put o overlay right here, um, the quality is really amazing. You can zoom in pretty good if you have a scanner, uh, most scanners are easy, like have no problem scanning Polaroids, since it's just pictures and not negative, you don't need anything special, and it works really good. If you got Newton rings, there's a really easy trick I will show you in a future video to, to get uh, rid of them, and you don't need to spend a lot of money for film holders or anything like that. Okay, let's do a little breakdown of the pros and cons of the camera, and it's easy as that. Um, pros, the film is pretty cheap with one euro per image. Um, the images turn out great if you set the focusing right. The flash works, it's great for snapshots of friends and everything. It folds together really nice and easy, so it's nice to carry around in the back. And it has some really nice functions like multi-exposure, the timer and uh, the remote control. Downsides for me, the shutter is one downside. Um, the, the push of the shutter is really too easy in my opinion. Also the exposure control, like darken and lighten, that could be a little bit better in my opinion, so that you have a little bit more control over it. The other one is for me that I forgot to focus, but that's a usability issue with myself, not with the camera. Okay, I think that's it about the Lomo Instant Square. I would really recommend buying one if you're interested in that camera. I really enjoyed using it. So if you have any questions about the camera, drop them in the comments below. If you liked the video, hit like. If you want to see more content, hit subscribe. So next week we'll take a look at the camera and its filters. And at the end, I really want to thank you guys that that channel is growing like super fast. I, I, I can't like explain how that works out, but it's amazing. And I, I love you guys. You're just amazing. All the questions you drop me, I'm happy to answer them. I do my best to answer them as quick as possible. Don't be mad at me if it takes some time. And it, it, it's, it's a fun ride with you and I hope to continue. <laughs> and I hope you, you like that stuff that I put out uh, in 2018. I will also add a new format, which is a Q&A. I will try to do that every two weeks. So if you have any questions uh, for that videos, just drop them in the comments below here. I will do a little teaser video um, for the Q&A soon, or you can also drop them there. And hope to see you next week. Bye.